So, uh, yeah, my background is uh, as a stills photographer. I'm a conventional photography, I have a degree in it, and I worked in advertising editorial photography for, for a little while beforehand. And uh, time lapse was more sort of a, a hobby um, sort of side of things. Uh, and it's, it's a great area, really, between conventional stills photography and, and moving images. It's somewhere in between the two, uh, which is really exciting. So I think a lot of, hopefully, what is unique about uh, my style and my work is, is sort of because of that, is sort of coming at something new and without maybe some of the training and, and sort of language that are kind of built into conventional filmmaking and a lot of the flexibilities of it. Because of the nature of our work, making viral videos, um, we have these portfolio pieces that millions of people watch, uh, and then we just have uh, email, generally email inquiries, come into our inbox um, with a client, essentially asking us to make a video of their location or their product or for their company. Uh, and from there, it can uh, develop into a conversation um, as to what they want and their needs, um, and uh, you know, budgetary requirements and sort of how big a project it is. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then, then a lot of the work really, really starts on, you know, when you hit the ground, when you meet, actually meet the client, when you see the location, then you can really, uh, really get into it. Um, and the, the storyboarding process is, uh, you know, if it is a city video, it's uh, very much about you know, being on the ground, going around, working out the, uh, the elements the client wants you to include, the elements you want to include. And very much with most city videos, it's not, you know, you're not reinventing the wheel. There are key landmarks and key features that are, you, know, you, you have to get in. And uh, then it's just very much about incorporating into the seamless sort of flow motion style and, and you know, making it something different because uh, you know, a lot of these sites have been photographed a great deal. So um, you know, you've got to add value. Uh, and actually once the storyboard's done, I mean that's, that's a lot of the work. It's sort of, um, it can take, you say like with the Dubai project, it was a, a few weeks of, uh, of intensive work getting everything together. So it can be quite a lengthy process, or it can be done in a day, sort of depends on the scale of a project. But once it's done, um, most of the hard work is done in a way, then it's, it's sort of the, a lot of the creative stuff and, and the, uh, the agreement with the client is, is sort of complete, and then it's just a matter of realizing it. I think flow motion really suits the city video format. And kind of crucially, because it's a single take and a roving camera approach, I think it gives the viewer a sense of actually experiencing location and not just seeing the end beautiful shot, but actually seeing some of the, the around and, and approaching and the views and, and how you get there. And, and, and to a degree, some of the logistics of where different landmarks are in a city. And I'm careful to try and incorporate as much of that in, in, as possible because I think it really adds to the experience uh, and is something relatively unique to that style kind of compared to the more traditional cut one second, here's a beautiful shot cut another second. Uh, so it's more of a journey and, and you know you sort of almost vicariously experience the city. The more time and the more resources you put into it, the sort of the bigger and the more spectacular it, it gets. I mean uh, so like uh, probably one of the bigger projects was Dubai. That is a public project that people have seen that I worked on and that was um, uh, two weeks in recon, I think six weeks shooting and about another six weeks in post putting it together and then probably lots of other hours in between. Um, and uh, you know, the, the simpler video would be, could be completed in like one or two days recon, uh, and then maybe shot over a week or 10 days, and then it's usually about the same in post, so 10 days shooting is about 10 days post. Uh, and to a large extent, I'm sort of a one-man band uh, as far as the, the camera stuff, but then you know, it helps to work with other people and, and, and other toys, so um, I've worked with other cameramen and in a more directorial role on quite a lot of projects, and we're certainly working with models a lot more on projects. To, uh, you know, the more ingredients you put in there, the more interesting the outcome, but uh, it's very scalable, so yeah, it can be a small video or it can be something you know, hopefully pretty spectacular. The uh, Pyongyang City video was, uh, was a very interesting project. It was for uh, Koyo Tours, or an English uh, tourism company, and they, they basically run tours to, uh, to Pyongyang and uh, Korea as a whole. Um, so uh, it was an incredible opportunity. I mean, they get inundated with filmmakers wanting to go there, so to get the chance was, uh, was incredible. Once again, we were uh, working uh, for essentially a, a tourism company, a, a tour company, Koyo Tours, and then it was in conjunction with uh, the North Korean Tourism Board, KITC. Uh, so they helped with all the permissions. It certainly it was in no way undercover. Everyone knew exactly what was happening. Um, and we worked within the standard restrictions in filming in North Korea. I mean, they don't 
you're not allowed to film military personnel, um, which I think is pretty universal, to be fair. Um, and uh, you're not allowed to film construction sites. And uh, there, were a few, there were restrictions along those lines. Um, but, uh, you know, we worked within that and, and shot some of the key sites. And uh, to be honest, we had a lot kind of freer experience in working for, like, corporate clients that should go unnamed. I mean, it was, um, yeah, it's... Uh, you are presenting a site and you're, you know, you're showing some of the good aspects of a city and it, that's no different from any other city really. We are, we're very lucky because we've got such a strong portfolio and, and hopefully quite a strong style as it's consistent through our work. Um, hopefully that gives clients a relatively strong idea of, of uh, how we might go about um, uh, realising their story or you know, capturing, uh, documenting uh, whatever it is they want to capture. Um, but it's, it's a big leap of faith for a client to take on a, you know, a creative of any form. Uh, and so I'm often quite glad it's, uh, you know, I'm on this side of the relationship because, um, yeah, committing a lot of resources to something that you know, is creative, it's not a defined outcome as such. So we do as much as we can to sort of uh, alleviate that and make it uh, hopefully a good experience for all involved.